If your mind or your intelligence does not get entangled with any identity, including your body, including your own thought process, including your own emotion, spiritual process is very natural. If your intelligence is not entangled with anything, it's very natural for your intelligence to inquire and open up different dimensions of life. You identify yourself with something in search of security, in search of safety, in, in search of self-preservation. Otherwise, it's not doing anything else, please see. It gives you some sense of false sense of belonging, which you will anyway shed someday. The moment you are identified with something that you are not, your intelligence is freaked. It will go in cycles around that. Whatever you are identified with, your intelligence functions only around that, please see. Yes? If you identify yourself with your religion, your nationality, your family, it works only around that. It's a certain type of prejudice, isn't it? A prejudiced mind cannot see. A prejudiced mind cannot reveal the reality of life, that's all it is. When I say prejudice, it's on many different levels. No, no, I'm very broad-minded, I am not prejudiced. Uh, well, you have a broad prejudice. <laughs> Your mind is functioning with a certain identity. Once there is an identity, it is prejudiced. On a certain day, a man died and he went to heaven. There, God himself opened the gates of heaven, welcomed him. And uh, God said, see, I have a few chores to finish and come. If you could just mind the gate for me for a few minutes, I'll just come back. He felt really great, you know, substituting for God. That's nice. Substituting for God, filling in for God is not a small honor, isn't it? Keeping the gates, but it's okay. You're doing God's job. He was uh, waiting for something to happen. And to his distress and amazement, his wife appeared at the gates. He said, what, what, what are you doing here? This is not a local bar or something. How did you follow me? She said, well, I was just driving back from the funeral, I crashed the car and here I am. Then when he entered, God had put a test for him. When he came to the gates, God had asked him, see, my son, you have come here, that's fine, but you have to spell a word if you have to enter the heaven." So he had thought, oh my God, is this old man a school teacher? He's asking for a spelling. Is, this a, is there a damn spelling test even here? He said, uh, the God said, don't you worry, it's a simple word. What's the word, Father? God said, you have to spell the word love. So, uh, then he thought, uh, L U L. You know, he had told many people, I love you, but he had never written a letter. So he thought, L U L V L O L O V E. God said, You passed, come in. Okay, somehow I got it. Now, when his wife came, she said, Okay, you have come here, but unless you spell a word, you can't get in. She said, oh, come on, if you can spell the, spell the damn word and get in, can't I do it? Tell me what's the damn word. He looked at her and said, Czechoslovakia <laughs> Mind is a very prejudiced thing. It all depends what you're identified with, you know. Whatever you are identified with, your mind rotates around that. Right now you are identified with many things that you are not, many. For example, if I say, 
I'm speaking as I'm speaking, suddenly if I pick up this glass and say, this is my glass, they will think, okay, Sadhguru has a problem. But it's all right, everybody says he's wise, let's listen. After some time I say, this is me, then you say, let's go, enough. <laughs> this is too much. Please see, this is what has happened to you. For example, there are many ways to look at this. For example, food appears on your plate. You say, this is my food, you eat it and then you say, this is me. Isn't it so? What you call as my body is just a heap of food or no? Yes, it's the food that you've eaten, isn't it? What you accumulate can be yours. I will not dispute it for now, but it can never be you. Isn't it so? Yes? Whatever you accumulate, it can be yours, but it can, but it can never become you, isn't it? Did you accumulate your body over a period of time? Yes or no? Yes or no? Did you accumulate your mind over a period of time? Yes? But both these things right now you call as myself, isn't it? And it doesn't stop there. It just extends into many things. Your home, your car, your things, your money, your children, your husband, your wife, a million other things. Your religion, your ideas, your ideologies, everything. You are identified with too many things which you are not. Once you are like this, your intelligence is freaked. It's a wonky intelligence, it's lost its penetration. It simply repeats old nonsense. You heard of Tenali Ramakrishna? Oh. Tenali Rama was a jester in Krishna Devaraya's uh, <clears throat> court. Similar things happened also with Akbar and Birbal, but we will stick to the South Indian story. It so happened, when Krishna Devaraya was young, because of some political reasons, his mother had to leave a few month old Krishna Devaraya with another woman for care and go somewhere. For more than eighteen months, the child was separated from the mother, but he was under the care of another woman who also had a child who was a few months older than Krishna Devaraya. So this woman nursed Krishna Devaraya as her own child. She breastfed him. And he grew up, but later on his mother came back, took him, and then he became a great emperor. So this boy who was that woman's son, Krishna Devaraya always treated him as a brother, as an elder brother because we drank milk from the same mother, so we are brothers, that's how he considered this. So as, as an expression of his gratitude, he gave away a few villages to this boy and he said, okay, you make your own kingdom. This village bumpkin got these few things and within a few years he squandered everything and lost everything and again back to square one. Krishna Devaraya went on to become a great emperor. Then one day, this man who was over thirty years of age at that time thought, my younger brother has become a great emperor and I am with nothing. Let me go there and see if I could get something out of this and he went. Krishna Devaraya welcomed him as, a, as you would welcome an elder brother. He gave him all the necessary honors, all the necessary hospitality and gave him a place in the court. He just looked at this, Krishna Devaraya had gathered a scintillating array of talent in his court. He looked at all this, all kinds of debates going on, concerts going on on a daily basis. He was just amazed. 
and above all, this Tenali Rama, such a brilliant assistant. Then he lamented with Krishna Devaraya, you are so successful, you have become a great emperor because you have such intelligent people around you. If only I had people like you around me, I would also become a great emperor. Particularly this Tenali Rama, if I had someone like him with me, I would also become a great emperor. So Krishna Devaraya felt bad about this and uh, he asked, what shall I do, my brother? He said, if you can give this Tenali Rama to me, I will go and build a great empire of my own. So immediately Krishna Devaraya called Tenali Rama and ordered, you must go with my elder brother, he wants you. So Tenali Rama said, oh, your elder brother wants me, why? I can send my elder brother with him. <laughs> that looked like a good idea for Krishna Devaraya because he is not eager to lose Tenali Rama, but at the same time his elder brother is asking, he doesn't know what to do. Oh, you really have an elder brother? I did not know. No, I have an elder brother. Let us send my elder brother with your elder brother. So they went and asked this man, so Tenali Rama's elder brother is willing to come with you, is that okay? So this fool thought, if Tenali Rama is so intelligent, his elder brother… <laughs> he said, fine. Next day he is to leave and a huge send-off has been organized. So in the full assembly of the court, everybody has assembled, and Tenali Rama came with a bull on the rope. He walked into the court. Krishna Devaraya saw this and asked, What is this? Why have you brought this bull into the court? No, my lord, this is my elder brother. <laughs> said, What nonsense? What is this you're trying to do? No, we drank milk from the same mother. Once you get identified with something that you are not, your intelligence is no good. It just becomes repetitive. So this repetitive intelligence is what we are referring to as karma. When we say, when we see somebody going through certain patterns irrespective of the situations in which they exist, sun came up wonderfully today morning, but somebody is miserable. Hmm? flowers are blossoming, weather is good, everything is great but somebody is miserable, then we say, oh, this is his karma. Why we are saying this is, this is his own doing because he has set up patterns which are just repetitive. He is not able to enjoy the sunrise, he is not able to enjoy the beautiful breeze, he is not able to enjoy the fragrance of the flowers. His karma is going on, what is going on in his head is what rules him. This is his karma. Karma means action, your action. Or in other words, your experience of life is one hundred percent your doing, nobody else is doing. <laughs>